How will the presidential elections in the United States affect your portfolio? Do you want to go long or short the Republicans or the Democrats? presidential season is upon us. There was a vote in New Hampshire. I'm sure you saw the results. Donald Trump, the Republican, won that primary. And for the Democrats, Bernie Sanders, a senator from the state of Vermont. What does it mean for you? What's it mean for your stock portfolio? You may have political views, but we're, we're an investment show. Let's take a look at what each candidate still in the race. There's about five or six Republicans, two Democrats. What it means for you and what it might mean for the for your investment portfolio. It's not a bad subject to think about. Let's start with the Republicans. Trump is making all the headlines. He's a real estate developer. He knows many of the banks. He, in theory, he should be very pro-business. He says he's all about creating jobs. He's all about military spending. And that's where you've got to weigh the balance. He's, yes, he's a businessman, but he's a controversial businessman. So you can't be sure that Trump business equals prosperity. It might it might work out that way. You might get a lot of government spending for military programs, and that's not so great. Jeb Bush, the, the son of the former president, bro brother of the former president, has strict views on monetary policy, and in that sense, Bush is probably a traditional Republican, limit spending, still providing safety net social programs. So probably favorable for the mentality of a businessman. Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz, these are senators from one from Florida, the other from Texas. They're affiliated with the Tea Party, anti-government, very strict on not wanting government programs to intrude in the lives of of the citizenry. So Cruz and Rubio, they could be wild cards. Cruz talks about get rid of the IRS, which would diminish government revenue. And Rubio never saw a government program he didn't want to cut. Let's look at the Democratic side. We've got two candidates left. We've got Bernie Sanders and we've got uh, Hillary Clinton, wife of the former president. Many formers in this group. Bernie Sanders says he's a socialist and why should we, why should we doubt him? He's a senator from the liberal state of, of Vermont. He's been in the Senate. He's been a mayor of Burlington, Vermont. And basically, he's tax and spend. He's really tax and spend. If you're making over a million dollars, maybe if you're making over $200,000, your tax rates will go up and up. What are you going to pay for? Free tuition for students, almost free national health care, cuts of military spending. Sanders is in, in the mindset of the world a British socialist, British Labor Party member. So if he keeps doing well, that's going to probably be a drag on investment opportunities. Finally, Hillary Clinton, the former Secretary of State, wife of Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton's an anomaly. He was a Democrat, so he should be tax and spend. At the same time, when he left office, there was a surplus. So you can't say he followed classic Democratic Keynesian deficit spending. Hillary Clinton probably ta tax and spend, I would guess. I can't say for sure. She's never really been in a position as a governor or head of a company. She's been in the Senate. She's been in Secretary of State. She hasn't had to manage a budget as such. The, 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 the first indications are that she's going to want to raise government spending, especially on various social programs. And for that, the money's got to come from somewhere, generally come from you, the voters. That's all the time we have today on The Investment Advisor. I'm your host, Matthew Stevenson, in partnership with Ducas Copy TV. Remember, money can take care of you. It cannot take care of itself.